Well, I'm talking to Dr. Jose Marti with the Disaster Response Network Enabled Platform. Uh, Dr. Marti, uh, good to see you. Uh, could you please tell me what is the uh, Disaster Response Network Enabled Platform? Uh, disasters, uh, unfortunately, cannot be avoided and they can happen uh, anywhere in the world. What one can do something about is how to respond to the situation. Uh, large disasters are different from small incidents in, in the sense that uh, they require the coordinated effort of many entities. Uh, this coordination has big influence on, 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 uh, on the number of lives that will be saved, on the recovery from the disaster situation. Uh, also happens that uh, normally in the area where the disaster uh, occurs, the local expertise may not be sufficient to deal with a situation of a very large uh, scale. So what we're trying to do here uh, is combine, form a network that combines expertise on uh, large uh, disaster situations. The network is, uh, is formed in Canada. Uh, we have three Canadian universities, uh, the University of British Columbia, the University of Western Ontario and uh, the University of New Brunswick. So these three groups are uh, working together in being able to assess, simulate and assess the situation that may be happening somewhere else in the world. For instance, uh, we could have uh, the case of this tsunami in uh, southeastern Asia. Uh, so let's use that as an example. The local group, uh, say in Thailand, uh, will respond to the situation. Now, in, in, in this uh, network of expertise concept, there will be an expert center in Thailand which will be working together with the emergency operating center in, in Thailand. That expert center will have access to our network of expertise. So data from the local uh, uh, situation, from the local scenario, will be sent large amounts of uh, geographical data, infrastructural data, uh, organizational data, they will be sent to, to the center in, uh, in Canada, to the hub, which in this case is uh, UBC. Uh, that data from UBC will be used by the UBC group, also by the group in Western Ontario and, uh, and New Brunswick. All these three groups are, high, uh, are interconnected with the high, very high bandwidth and, uh, and secure safety and security uh, aspects of the Canary Network. So all these three groups now will have access to the data uh, of the disaster zone and they will do assessment on this data that they are experts on. For instance, in, in the present project, UBC is simulating the resources layer. Now, when disaster happens, resources allocation is a critical point. How much of a given uh, scarce uh, uh, commodities, say electricity, yes. is available and where should that electricity be, be sent in a prioritized manner. So you're almost like the eyes and ears, once you have all this data, you're the, almost the eyes and ears for the disaster response people on the ground. You can tell them where to best we put can, their resources? We can, we, can, uh, we can help them, we can uh, provide them with a more global uh, overview of the situation and how looking at the global situation the uh, local bodies can act more more effectively so we can assist them and one of the ways we can assist them is by simulation the other way is that uh, uh, during peacetime uh, when things are normal we are running a number of uh, scenarios uh, planning preparing for possible events and having already stored in a master database, best responses to all these different possible situations. Have you been able to uh, do any uh, real time, real world applications yet? We we work together with the uh, Olympic Committee uh, in preparation for the Vancouver 2010 Olympics. Uh, so we work for uh, DRDC, Defense Research and Development Canada, who were assessing the local responders. So we ran a number of possible disaster situations, uh, including uh, earthquakes or uh, incidents that would create mass panic, for instance, in busy place. So we, we simulated uh, those situations and we 
uh, gave the results to the to the responders. So this could have helped as well in say a situation like Haiti. Yeah, definitely. Uh, there are different aspects to a disaster. Like in, uh, in my understanding is that in Haiti, many of the physical infrastructures were not really seismically hardened. So there was the aspect that there was the big disaster situation. But again, we cannot control at the moment it happens what's going to happen. What we can control is the response to it, is the, the, the organization of the response. So how long has this research been underway and how long will it take to, uh, to complete this, uh, your, your research phase? We started this with, uh, with a grant from Public Safety Canada together with uh, NSERC. That was uh, seven years ago already. So at that point, uh, they had the vision to look at the issue of interdependencies among infrastructures, like the power grid, the uh, water system, transportation system, how damage in one system affects the other system. So that initiative led to the development of simulation tools that can uh, uh, model and assess that influence am among subsystems. So that was done uh, uh, at a local stage. Now uh, what the Canary uh, 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 funding has allowed us to do is to expand the concept from a local group working on or assessment, this, assessing this kind of situation, to have multiple nodes that can work together on this. So, because the, this is so, the, 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 the amount of expertise required for a large disaster is very extensive. So no single uh, uh, group will have uh, all the expertise needed. So the main concept here is to combine expertise from multiple groups, combine simulation capabilities from multiple groups, and then put it all together to assess uh, a particular situation. Where do you hope to see this uh, evolve? The next uh, stage is to actually uh, go and, and deploy these in emergency control centers. So to us, that's a, to go to the practical uh, 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 online uh, uh, application. So if we can deploy the tool with EOCs, emergency operating centers, so uh, and uh, they have this available to analyze situations and also in real time when the situ situation is happening. How long do you think that will take? Three years, <laughs> something like that. Uh, because we've, we've laid the groundwork to, to, to some extent, uh, but it's a matter of uh, fine-tuning the tools to, 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 the, to the level of reliability that is needed for, for, for continuous use. Uh, and that's by, really your next step is to do that. Now. That's right, that's our next step. Yeah. Okay. How many people are working on this now? Right now, uh, there's three universities and there is four or five persons per university, so from 15 to 20 people. Okay. I, I forgot to mention we also have international partners, okay. uh, so one partner is uh, in Thailand and we're working with the Asian Institute of Technology in, in, uh, in Bangkok to duplicate what happened during the, the disaster, uh, the tsunami disaster situation. Uh, we also have an affiliated group in, in Rome, uh, in Italy. Uh, we have uh, an affiliated group in Mexico City, and we are expanding because as uh, people learn about what we're doing, there's a growing interest. For instance, one of our team members, uh, uh, Dr. Carlos Ventura, he was in Chile, talked to the Ch Chilean authorities, and they showed great interest in uh, participating in this, uh, in this activity.